In modern warfare, precision is everything, and few weapons embody that principle better than glide bombs. Both the United States and Russia have developed advanced precision-guided munitions capable of striking targets with devastating accuracy. But how do they stack up against each other on the battlefield? A recent report highlights just how fierce this competition has become. According to the Russian Ministry of Defense, Russian air defenses intercepted and destroyed six U.S.-supplied JDAM bombs fired by Ukrainian forces. While the claim remains unverified, it underscores the increasing challenge Ukraine faces in delivering effective airstrikes against Russian positions. At the same time, Russia has ramped up its use of its own glide bombs, which have played a key role in devastating Ukrainian defensive positions, military depots, and infrastructure. With both sides relying on these high-precision weapons, the battlefield is becoming a contest of technology, strategy, and countermeasures. So, how do JDAMs and Russian glide bombs compare? Which one is more effective in Ukraine? Let's break it all down. To understand the battle between these gliding munitions, let's first look at the JDAM, or Joint Direct Attack Munition, the U.S. solution for turning unguided bombs into precision strike weapons. Unlike standalone missiles, JDAM is a guidance kit, not a bomb itself. Developed in the late 1990s, this kit can be fitted onto bombs ranging from 500 pounds to 2,000 pounds, giving them GPS an inertial navigation system or INS guidance for pinpoint accuracy. The way it works is simple. A fighter jet or bomber releases the JDAM from high altitude, and once in freefall, its INS or GPS system continuously adjusts its flight path to ensure it reaches the designated target. This system allows JDAMs to be highly effective in all weather conditions, making them a reliable precision strike option. For even greater range, the JDAMER variant comes with foldable wings, increasing its reach from 24 kilometers to over 72 kilometers. This allows aircraft to launch attacks from a safer distance, reducing their exposure to enemy air defenses. However, while JDAMs are highly effective, they are not without weaknesses. One of their biggest vulnerabilities is GPS jamming. Russia has invested heavily in electronic warfare capabilities, disrupting GPS signals and reducing JDAM accuracy. Reports from the Ukraine conflict suggest that Russian jamming has caused multiple JDAM strikes to miss their targets, limiting their effectiveness in heavily contested airspace. by modifying the tail of its bombs, Russia took a different approach, enhancing the front instead. Russian glide bombs, such as the Fab 500 with UMPK, are standard Soviet-era bombs retrofitted with foldable wings and a guidance system. Unlike JDAMs, these bombs glide toward their targets, allowing Russian forces to strike from greater distances while avoiding direct exposure to enemy defenses. Here's how they work. Russian aircraft release these bombs from high altitude, staying outside the range of most Ukrainian air defenses. Once deployed, wings extend, allowing the bomb to glide tens of kilometers instead of simply dropping. A GLONASS-based guidance system provides mid-course corrections, significantly improving accuracy. With a range of 40 to 60 kilometers, Russian glide bombs enable long-range precision strikes making them an increasingly dominant weapon in Ukraine. Since mid-2023, Russia has heavily relied on glide bombs, using them to strike Ukrainian defensive positions daily. Unlike expensive cruise missiles or guided rockets, these bombs are cheap and can be deployed in large numbers, overwhelming enemy positions. However, Russian glide bombs also have weaknesses. Glonis jamming can disrupt their guidance system, 
reducing accuracy in GPS-contested environments. Additionally, they lack the maneuverability of cruise missiles, making them easier to track and potentially intercept. Another key limitation is that they must be launched from high altitudes, which can expose Russian aircraft to long-range air defenses. When comparing JDAMs and Russian glide bombs head-to-head, -head, several factors come into play, from guidance systems to battlefield effectiveness and cost. So, which weapon holds the advantage? When it comes to range, JDAMs in their standard form can reach targets up to 24 kilometers away, while the JDAM ER variant, equipped with foldable wings, extends that range to 72 kilometers. Russian glide bombs, depending on the variant, can glide between 40 and 60 kilometers, giving them a comparable standoff capability. This means that while JDAM ER has a slight edge in range, Russian glide bombs still allow aircraft to engage targets from beyond most frontline air defenses. But range and guidance mean nothing if the weapon isn't effective on the battlefield. JDAMs have long been a go-to choice for precision strikes, but in Ukraine, their effectiveness is declining. Russia's electronic warfare units have consistently disrupted JDAM guidance systems, and interceptions by Russian air defenses have further reduced their impact. Meanwhile, Russian glide bombs have become one of the most frequently used weapons in the conflict, raining down on Ukrainian defensive positions almost daily. Their ability to strike from long distances while bypassing enemy air defenses has made them a critical tool for Russian forces. Cost is another important factor in this comparison. A JDAM kit costs between $25,000 and $84,000 per unit, depending on the variant making them relatively affordable by Western precision weapon standards. However, Russian glide bombs are significantly cheaper, as they simply modify existing unguided bombs, allowing Russia to produce and deploy them at scale without the high cost of advanced precision-guided munitions. So, which one is better? In a GPS-friendly environment, JDAMs are more precise, and the JDAM-ER offers superior range. But in a contested battlefield with electronic warfare and advanced air defenses, Russian glide bombs are proving to be the more reliable and cost-effective solution. But what do you think? Share your thoughts in the comment below and thanks for watching.